Crepes have a reputation as fussy French food, but they're amazingly easy to make. Best of all, they keep really well in a fridge or freezer, so they're great to have on hand to whip up simple and delicious dinners and desserts. In this video, I'll show you how to make tender, delicate crepes that go great with both savory and sweet fillings. Crepe batter is usually made in a blender, so it comes together really fast. First, combine your eggs, milk, and salt. And blend. Now add your flour and blend for another 20 seconds or so until it's really smooth. Usually you add melted butter to the crepe batter, but what we're doing here is adding brown butter. You cook the butter for a few minutes after it's melted to get the milk solids nice and brown. Add that in and blend for another 10 seconds. Let your batter rest for at least five minutes. This gives the flour time to absorb the liquid and let any gluten that may have formed relax. That'll give you a thicker, more even batter. If you want, you could even let it rest up to 24 hours. No matter how long you let the batter rest, you're gonna to wanna to check the consistency before you cook it. It's about the thickness of heavy cream. If it's as thick as pancake batter, you're gonna to wanna to thin it with some milk. Now let's talk about the pan. Here I'm using a crepe pan. You'll notice it has a flat bottom and really low edges. It makes flipping a lot easier. It also heats very evenly and very quickly. But you don't need a crepe pan to make these crepes. You can make them with any nonstick skillet, or any really well seasoned skillet that you have at home, the only thing you wanna make sure of is that the base measurement is eight inches across. Now we wanna heat the pan on medium high heat. The pan is ready when a couple drops of water sizzle across the surface. You're gonna to wanna to grease the pan with a little bit of softened butter on a paper towel. If your butter browns immediately when you do this, your heat is too high, so you should lower it and let the pan cool for a minute. Pour a quarter cup of the batter into a little measuring cup or a ladle. And I'm gonna pour and tilt my pan simultaneously to get as much coverage on the pan as possible. If doing this leaves a little hole, you could just add a drop of the batter to cover it. Let this cook for about a minute. If you didn't measure your batter exactly, don't worry, but you might have a little extra batter in the pan, so you're gonna to wanna to pour it off and get a nice even layer on the pan. As you see the sides getting dry and a little brown, you're gonna to wanna to lift and check the bottom. You'll see that characteristic brown lacy pattern. You're gonna to wanna to flip it and let it cook for an additional 20 seconds. Like pancakes, the first one is always a dud. So don't worry if it's too brown. You'll have about 14 more to practice with. After you've flipped it, let it cook for about another 20 seconds. And when it's done, it'll slide right out of the pan. You'll wanna butter the pan every two to three crepes, or when the pan starts looking really dry. Flipping is what scares people the most, but you might find that using your fingers or a finger spatula combination will make it easier. Oh, this one's perfect. Slide the finished crepe onto the rack, and don't worry about stacking them. They won't stick together. There are endless ways to serve crepes, and one of the best and easiest ways is to warm the crepe in a little bit of butter Sprinkle with a little bit of sugar and some fresh lemon juice. Fold. Oh, that noise means good stuff is coming. And serve. Hmm. The simple filling really brings out the springy, tender texture of the crepe, as well as the richness from the brown butter.